Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all of you joining this closing session of the annual meeting of the Alliance for Child Protection in Humanitarian Action 2022. We've come to the end of our busy three days of events. So much has been shared and there've been so many people to meet. I've certainly made lots of new connections. Sadly, our co-coordinator Hani Mansourian is not able to join this closing session with us today, but he's been supporting from the sidelines as you will have seen. I expect that the learning will be uh, continuing for some days and weeks to come as many of us dip into the drawings and uh, that are up on our Philo space and uh, watch the recordings as they go up on our, on our YouTube channel as well. Um, so we'll continue the networking as well in our community of practice. I hear that just before this closing session, it actually crashed, I think, because so, so many people are trying to join, which is only a good thing. Um, our hopes for the meeting were to engage you in some rich discussions about your practice around the world as it relates to our strategic priorities. Um, I think you will have struggled to come away from the meeting without knowing what our strategic priorities are, but we will showcase them a little bit more in this closing session. Um, so yeah, we really wanted to learn from each other to see how to take our strategy forward over the next year and for the whole strategy period. So in this closing session, we'll start by reflecting what we've seen and heard during the meeting as it links to our strategic priorities. And we'll take some time to look ahead and think about how we can use the knowledge and learning generated in our work. Um, we'll end by giving thanks for everyone's contributions. And after the session, you're invited to stay on and be hosted by some of our key supportive donors in an informal networking session. So we'll start with a few uh, Q and A's to get to know the donors better. And then we'll pop you into breakout rooms where you can uh, ask some of your questions to the, to the donors that are joining us. So to help us to reflect on what we've seen and heard, we'd like to invite you to share your key lessons or key takeaways from this meeting according to our different strategic priorities using a Mentimeter. So I think, again, you can't have come away from this year's meeting without having used a Mentimeter. So I think it's probably all a familiar thing to do. So if you click the link that's in the chat box and uh, you'll be able to start completing the Mentimeter and then we can have a look at uh, what comes out for each. So I think Judy's gonna give us a little bit of uh, mood music while we uh, reflect and, and pop in our, our reflections for each of the strategic priorities. <laughs> I may even pop one in on my own. So people aren't starting shy, they're starting with needing to advocate to donors. <laughs> Probably knowing our audience coming up next. Reflects and reflections on knowledge production, engaging children from the start. Lots of ideas coming through. And I'll ask Julie to put the results in uh, the chat box as well, so people can have a look give you a bit more time to, to input. I love that. We need it more and we need it fast. Accountability can't be achieved without working across sectors and breaking down silos. Lovely. Essential at every level and at every step of programming. Wow. We need to be accountable to children, not just to donors. Okay. Okay, I think we're going to move on now to the next uh, Menti. So there's a few inputs already in there. Let's see what else comes out. 
We've had some quite healthy debates. More coming up. This is still the accountability, so if we can switch back to localization. Yeah. So must involve underrepresented communities, consider power dynamics. Localization means truly led, not just consulted. And financial support going directly is what we're, we're striving for, although we've definitely debated some of the challenges of that. Okay, let's move on to working cross sectors, the third mentee, and we can pop back to, to localization. So some enthusiasm about the involvement of other sectors in the meeting. Yes, I definitely agree with that. Keen to get going. So there's excitement there. Being able to get a bigger reach with fewer resources by collaborating. Communicating is key. So we've discussed terminology. Do people speak our language? Can we speak theirs? Okay, it's not a luxury, but a necessity quite a lot coming out on working cross sectors. Engaging the donors to promote this cross sector working and probably help to open some of the doors, I imagine. Mm -hmm. And then the link between prevention and working cross sectors is there. Okay. In the interest of time, I'll just ask if we can sli uh, switch back to localization, see if there's any more points coming out there, and then we'll move on. It's got a few more. Yeah, so breaking down the barriers for local organizations when it comes to working with donors. That's a tricky one, but we definitely need to get there. Mm -hmm. And seeing how to empower agencies to take services to the most affected. So incre increasing the reach of those local organizations potentially. And global problems can be solved at the local level. Yeah, so shifting some of that global to local connection. Okay, so if we come off this mentee, we can wind down the music a bit. I hope it's not too noisy as I talk. I don't know if we can do volume control. Okay, and then we, we wanted to go through another mentee, if you don't mind, a looking ahead mentee. So we wanted to share, really, we want to, you to think about how you're going to use this knowledge and learning from the meeting in your future work. And we need to think about how we're going to use it in our future work. So we'll, we'll steal a few of your ideas, um, but we'd like to hear how you want to use it in your individual work. So we're, we'll be sending a feedback form after the meeting for you to complete, and we're asking about it then. But we'd also like you to put it in a mentee now. And if you have time, you can also put it on a piece of paper. This is Hanny's, Hanny was keen on this one. Put it on a piece of paper, fold it up and keep it, keep it for yourself uh, to hold yourself to account, your individual accountability afterwards. So this is this mentee is about um, what, uh, your, what is your commitment to take forward one key learning that you've gained from this meeting into your work. So your key learning now, what are you going to do with it? So if you can pop it in the mentee. Uh, also, if you have time, pop it on a piece of paper for your own personal accountability. And then we will be sharing a feedback form in the coming days as well for you to share it on there with us to help with our monitoring and evaluation on the kind of the value of these meetings, why we all come together, why we invest in all of this uh, coming together. Uh, does it prompt people to do more? So I hope the mentee's in the chat. Let's have a look. Yes. The rent is in now. Okay. So maybe Julie, you can screen share so we can see the results as they come in. That would be great. Let me see if we need any music or if people are keen or ready to get sharing. Okay. 
So I think maybe what we'll do just in the interest of time is uh, I'll share a few of these and then we're going to dive into a little bit of sharing from some of the Secretariat colleagues. So I have with me today Chizuru, uh, Acheng and Elspeth and they're going to share, <laughs> you love the music, that's great. Um, they're going to share some of our, what we've heard and what we've seen and observed over the last few days. From all of the sessions, we've tried really hard to have little people taking notes in all of the sessions on the different strategic priority areas and, and what the what we've heard coming out on those. So Chizuru, Cheng and Elspeth have worked very hard in the last uh, maybe four hours to bring some, some key reflections together. So I'll let you have a look at uh, what's coming out in the mentee on the chat. Uh, by uh, Julie sharing the results link in the chat. And then I'm going to hand over to Chizuru, Acheng and Elspeth to share some reflections uh, from, from what we've seen and heard. Okay, so if we uh, switch over now, lovely. Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hand the floor to Chizuru to tell us a bit about what we've seen and heard on our accountability strategic priority from the last three days of meetings. So over to you, Chizuru. Sure, thank you very much, Camila. So on the accountability, uh, throughout the annual meeting, uh, I noticed many people were interested in this topic. I witnessed active conversation on this topic in the session, in the breakout rooms, and also in the chat. Uh, I could see there is a kind of common understanding among participants that accountability to children is important, something we need to strengthen. Uh, also, we just saw the mentee input saying we need more of it and need it fast. But I think maybe the question is how to do it. Uh, from the abstract sessions, we have learned many examples and good practices. Uh, can you go to the next slide? So this, yes, so this is some uh, example of the illustration from the sessions. You can check out more in our field platform. Uh, so, for example, in strategic priorities in session seven, accountability to children in armed conflict, presenters share some good practice in, on safe participation of CAFAG in program cycle, from program design to implementation. In session 10, accountability to children participation in design and implementation, uh, presenters share some different methodologies to working with children in child protection projects using drama and sports. Uh, in session nine, uh, evidence and research for child protection and accountability. Presenters highlighted the importance of listening to the most vulnerable children and an affected populations in research and in data collection. Um, at the same time, uh, in order to strengthen accountability to children, uh, we also need to work with different actors in the wider uh, social ecological model around children. Uh, so we put children at the center, but we also work with the different stakeholders, including caregivers, community stakeholders, including faith leaders. And then in session four uh, on the improving impacts through strong child-friendly accountability and feedback mechanism, presenters share their experiences and models on the child-friendly accountability and feedback mechanism. Uh, and then of course, participation is a light of children, but in addition to that, children knows the best about their life. So child-friendly accountability and the feedback mechanism has strengthened the program outcome and then also strengthened the, the protection of children as well. So in addition to those accountability theme sessions, I have had many panelists and panelists were actively discussing the accountability agenda in different sessions. And then uh, in addition to those key opportunities and in success stories, I also noticed some common challenges faced by different actors. Uh, those are including like limited resources, or capacities, or sometimes local norms not favor of child participation, and also how we can ensure the safety of the children in these participation initiatives. Uh, to solve some of those challenges, I remember one panelist uh, was uh, passionately uh, sharing, highlighted that importance of joint activity and knowledge sharing. So we need to work together to influence donors, child protection stakeholders, government, communities, and also our colleagues, and convince them why it is important to have child friendly accountability mechanism, and we need to work with children throughout the program cycle, and then also ensuring meaningful participation of the children. Uh, as a way forward, uh, the Alliance will continue to explore how we can provide leadership and promote meaningful act action on accountability to children, including ensuring their meaningful participation within the humanitarian program. 
thank you very much and over to Camila or Achen. Wow, that was a lot, lot to, to bring together very short time and it's beautiful that you've brought in the journalisms. Thank you very much, Trizuru. I'm going to hand over to Acheng now to talk to us about the localization strategic priority. Thank you very much, Camilla. I just want to let everyone know that three minutes is not enough for the presentation, but I will try because three minutes is what I need to introduce myself and my whole clan. All right. Um, localization. Um, as we have just seen, we have uh, um, looked at diff what, what we perceive localization is, but for purposes of summarizing our discussion in the three weeks, I mean the three days, I'd like to go back to the, the strategic, uh, the alliance strategic priorities and localization is um, defined as tackling existing privileges and power structures in humanitarian decision making, funding and pro programmatic um, intervention, of course, with the vision of, uh, and that should be able to guide equitable, dignified, and principled humanitarian action. So with that, what we discussed in the different sessions, we have summarized them in four main areas. The first area being that we as humanitarian workers, and I would add develop, de development workers, need to deeply reflect on the terminology uh, localization and related to localization is also the language we use uh, and we need to be careful that the different uh, languages or wording we use uh, do not reinforce an equal power structure and then the second category of our de de uh, deliberation is key reflections on capacity strengthening in um, on capacity strengthening and I'll go into a, a, a little bit of depth in all these areas. The third area is contextualization and democratization of knowledge. And lastly, community-led child protection. So if I can just say a few words on each of those um, uh, areas in terms of reflection and on the terminology and the uh, language, we've, um, we, we, we realize what came across is that um, localization efforts are grounded in uh, the grant bargain um, initiative. Um, so a lot of what we are doing now can be traced back in the grant bargain initiative and also the Alliance strategic priority. The other thing in terms of language is that we are using words like um, giving the community a voice. Uh, does, is, is that the word, the expression we should use? Um, the other terminology that we might want to look at is capacity building versus capacity strengthening. And the, and the last in, in terms of this uh, area is community based versus community guided or community led. If we, I move quickly into the key reflections on uh, capacity strengthening, I'll just take a few points um, that local capacity strengthening should be culturally appropriate and based on needs and requests from the local actors, not based on um, designs made elsewhere. The other key important, uh, the other important factor is that uh, uh, capacity strengthening is actually a two-way process that the local actors may benefit or will benefit from international uh, standards, um, guidelines, um, organizational uh, processes, and also on the other hand, the international actors will benefit a lot on the local knowledge, local negotiation skills, especially around in, in sectors where, in areas where there's conflict and, and so on. So the benefit is mutual. Uh, let me run through uh, the area of contextualization and the democratization of knowledge. We want to, as we move forward, we want to contextualize um, knowledge production. Uh, so if we're coming up with the uh, training um, tools, 
we are coming up with guidance notes, we need to contextualize that in, in each and every context. Of course, um, contextualization interacts with global um, settings. Um, so um, quickly moving forward, there was a lot that came through around community-led child protection. Um, we are reminded uh, in the different, we were reminded in the different discussions that the fact that the, the importance of being guided by local communities and structures in our responses. We insert ourselves into communities, we listen, and then um, we are guided by what the community is saying. Um, I guess three minutes are up. Before I'm thrown out, I beg to stop there. Back to you, Camila. Lovely, thank you. And uh, it's lovely to see the different styles of presentation as well. We've got a different one again from our colleague Elspeth, who's going to talk to us about our strategic priority on, well, I'm going to say, let you say the full title, Elspeth. Multi-sector and integrated programming and collaboration. Thank you. Thank you, Camilla, and thank you, Chizuru and Acheng. Um, so I would just like to say a thanks actually to the Secretariat team and also to some of the coordination group around this priority, especially Monica and Jeanette, um, who have also been supporting, collecting reflections and takeaways from the session. So some key points we would like to share, um, I think is firstly that we just need to keep it at the front of, of, of our minds at all times. What we want to achieve is a commitment towards the centrality of children and their protection across um, all sectors of humanitarian action. We had participants from different sectors in different sessions um, who've grown, who've shown great willingness uh, and commitments to advance this work. And I also saw this reflected on the Menti now about having substantial and great partners. Um, secondly, is that we have a really strong foundation to accelerate this work going forward. So as, as we've heard this week, and many of you know, the Child Protection Minimum Standards Working Group um, have an intersectoral framework uh, for advancing children's and, and protection and well-being, which provides a really strong collective steer. Um, and it's really clear as well from these sessions that we have established and collected a really good level of information that we strategic that we need to use really more strategically to advance work across sectors. Um, in, 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 in our work uh, in the field, we need to systematically gather evidence, ensure that we're using existing advocacy materials as well as new evidence gathered with donors and governments. Um, next, collaboration is key. I think the very purposeful use of the word collaboration in this strategic priority struck me of something that we really need to focus on and that multi-sectoral integrated programming will never thrive in an environment which does not prioritize support and facilitate it. Um, so for this collaboration is fundamental. Um, and some key aspects here about, um, which again I saw in the Menti are about prioritizing learning about other sectors we are partnering with. So in breakout rooms that I was in with food to, um, around child protection and food security, we heard how, for example, child protection actors often have a very limited knowledge and understanding of the various food mo uh, security modalities, their related tools, approaches to assessments, which differ very much uh, to those in child protection. Um, we heard from C from uh, camp coordination and camp management. Um, oh, I think we, we lost Elspeth a little bit. Like a lot to do in terms of okay. um, learning more about. Sorry, I think I'm over. We lost over you there with food security, but uh, you, you're doing fine. Oh, okay. Sorry, I have a unstable internet today. Um, and I think just also needing to acknowledge that we also need to draw on other um, sectors expertise. We need support from humanitarian leadership and donors, advocacy is key, um, and we also need to uh, advocate on the benefits of multi-year integrated programming. Uh, we need to invest and advocate for, for learning, development and capacity strengthening. Um, we've seen within lots of the examples from education and child protection that they're very close sectors, we have a lot of collaboration, yet a major challenge is um, is the capacity strengthening that's required for child protection actors in education and education actors in child protection and how this is often limited and, and cut in humanitarian budgets. Um, 
And I think just a, a, luck, a couple of last points is that we have a lot of great partnerships and collaborations are ongoing. Um, so there's some kind of older partnerships such as education and child protection, which are flourishing, increasing focus on livelihood within this. Um, whilst other sectors like camp coordination and camp management, the collaboration is just beginning. And it was great to be joined by some of our partners um, in these sectors. And a final reflection, I think it will be great to see next year if we can have a greater involvement of other sector actors um, and, and also more generally in, in the Alliance through webinars, joint advocacy efforts, co-developed products, guidance and tools. Um, and I know there is a lot being planned in this regard. And as I saw uh, on the mentee as well, let's get to it. So thank you very much. <laughs> Absolutely. OK, well, huge, huge thanks to Chizu, Cheng and Elspeth for pulling those uh, report backs together at very short notice. Obviously, it's not everything we're going to do. Obviously, the rest of you will also have perspectives as we bring our strategic plan together. So this is just a bit of a, a trailer for joining in those workshops that we'll be setting up for after the annual meeting. OK, so without further ado, I'd like to take a few more minutes of your time to give thanks. Um, for those people who've collaborated to bring this week's uh, meeting together. Uh, people have worked incredibly hard at pretty short notice. Um, to put this in context, we usually bring this meeting together in five months, and this time we've brought it together in just three months um, so that we can move it from October to June, which uh, probably filled a few people with some slight dread at the beginning of the process. But uh, I think now we're at the end of it, we can all have that sense of, you know, celebration and achievement and uh, and also really feel like it's put us on the right footing for, for bringing the strategy to life um, and into action. Um, so we don't have time to thank everyone individually, but I wanted to at least give some shout outs to the groups of people who've uh, worked uh, for the event. And I've got a lovely animated slide to help with this, which I need to thank Stephanie and Anissa for pulling together at short notice. So Julie, if you can uh, play our slide. I'll start by thanking our fantastic facilitators with, without whom this event could not have happened. They've worked for over a month now to design and bring together the sessions with their speakers, as well as to be here and do a great job on the day. They've also been supported by the careful hand of the production team, and all of the discussions have been captured by the very talented artists at Journalism. We've been joined by an incredible range and number of speakers. They applied to speak at this year's meeting and they've joined us on the journey, meeting their fellow speakers and learning and sharing together with you all. With thanks to UNHCR, we've been joined by a whole team of interpreters and recorders who've ensured that this event and the recordings that will be available after it uh, are accessible in Spanish, French and Arabic, as well as English. And this year we've benefited from the additional input of those that put together infographics and shared them in our community of practice and in the sessions during the breaks. And I'm really looking forward to catching up on those after the meeting because I haven't had chance this week. And last but not least, the task team for the annual meeting made up of our secretariat team, our learning and development working group co-lead and two members of the Alliance Steering Committee. So thank you to you all. I'd like you all to try something, which is to unmute. And when I give a countdown, I'd like you all to say as loud as you can. And if you want to in your own language, a thank you. So if the producers can help me to take everybody off mute. And I'll count down. I see people are off mute. <laughs> kind of relies on everyone doing it. All right, so I'm going to count down then. All right. Three, two, one. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Lovely, lovely. All right, then. Well, thank you again, everybody, really from the bottom of our hearts. I'm now going to hand the floor to Elspeth, who will tell you a bit about our donor networking session uh, that follows, which is our truly final session of the annual meeting. Thank, Thank you so much. We'll so, need to remute everyone, of course, as well. Thanks. Sorry. Uh, please don't leave us just yet because we have one final and very exciting session. Um, so we are going to be joined, we are joined here today by some representatives from 
um, from ECHO and from um, the USAID Bureau of Humanitarian Affairs. Um, they've been very active in the meetings this week um, and we'll have the opportunity to um, ask some questions and hear more about their reflections on the opportunities and challenges that we face as a sector. And then we will also have the space for some networking where they would absolutely love to hear from you, um, the challenges that you're facing on the ground. Um, and if you have any questions you want to raise or topics you would like to discuss linked to the Alliance strategy or not, we really welcome you to utilize this space and this opportunity. Mm -hmm.